Hello and welcome to day 189 of our Bible in a Year Challenge. My name is Sandra. I'm going to be your host for today. Welcome. We are committed to reading and fellowshipping with God's Word every single day of this year, 2024. Please kindly go ahead right now, subscribe to my YouTube channel, follow me on Facebook, on Instagram, and on TikTok at Sandra Boyo Arulepa. Let's get started. Let us say a word of prayer. Dear Heavenly Father, Thank you for this new day and another opportunity to delve into your holy scriptures. As we come to day 189 of our journey through the Bible, we are grateful for your faithfulness and the profound insights we have gained from each page. Lord, we ask that your Holy Spirit be with us as we read today. Open our hearts to fully receive your word and enlighten our minds to understand the lessons you have for us. Help us to see your truth clearly and to apply it courageously to our lives. We pray that our study today will deepen our relationship with you and transform us into more faithful followers of Christ. May the words we read inspire us to love more deeply act more justly and walk more humbly with you grant us the wisdom to discern your will and the strength to live out your commands let our time in your word be a source of comfort challenge and change we seek not only knowledge but also spiritual growth that bears fruit in every aspect of our lives bless our reading today lord and make it fruitful May it resonate in our hearts and minds long after we close the pages of our Bibles. We dedicate this time to you with thankful hearts, ready to learn and eager to be transformed. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Day 189, July 8th, 2024. 365 days Bible reading, Old Testament, 2 Kings 16, 2 Kings 17. New Testament Acts 26, 24 to 32, Acts 27, 1 to 12, Psalms and Proverbs, Psalm 81, verse 8 to 16, Old Testament NIV version, 2 Kings 16, 1 to 20, Ahaz, king of Judah, in the 17th year of Pekah, son of Remaliah, Ahaz, son of Jotham, king of Judah, began to reign. Ahaz was 20 years old when he became king, and he reigned in Jerusalem 16 years. Unlike David, his father, he did not do what was right. What? He did not do what was right in the eyes of the Lord his God. He followed the ways of the kings of Israel and even sacrificed his son in the fire, engaging in the detestable practices of the nations the Lord had driven out before the Israelites. He offered sacrifices and burned incense at the high places, on the hilltops, and under every spreading tree. Then Razin, king of Aram, and Pekah, son of Remaliah, king of Israel, marched up to fight against Jerusalem and besieged Ahaz, but they could not over overpower him. At that time, Razin, king of Aram, recovered Elath for Aram by driving out the people of Judah. Edomites then moved into Elath and have lived there to this day. Ahaz sent messengers to say to Tiglath Pileser, king of Assyria, I am your servant and vassal. Come up and save me out of the hand of the king of Aram and of the king of Israel, who are attacking me. And Ahaz took the silver and gold found in the temple of the Lord and in the treasuries of the royal palace and sent it as a gift to the king of Assyria. The king of Assyria complied by attacking Damascus and capturing it. He deported its inhabitants to Kir and put Razin to death. Then King Ahaz went to Damascus to meet Tiglath Pileser, king of Assyria. He saw an altar in Damascus and sent to Uriah the priest a sketch of the altar with detailed plans for its construction. So Uriah the priest built an altar in accordance with all the plans that King Ahaz had sent from Damascus and finished it before King Ahaz returned. 
When the king came back from Damascus and saw the altar, he approached it and presented offerings on it. He offered up his burnt offering and grain offering, poured out his drink offering and splashed the blood of his fellowship offerings against the altar. As for the bronze altar that stood before the Lord, he brought it from the front of the temple, from between the new altar and the temple of the Lord, and put it on the north side of the new altar. King Ahaz then gave his orders to Uriah the priest. On the large new altar, offer the morning burnt offering and the evening grain offering, the king's burnt offering and his grain offering, and the burnt offering of all the people of the land and their grain offering and their drink offering. Splash against this altar the blood of all the burnt offerings and sacrifices, but I will use the bronze altar for seeking guidance. And Uriah the priest did just as King Ahaz had ordered. King Ahaz cut off the side panels and removed the basins from the movable stands. He removed the sea from the bronze bowls that supported it and set it on a stone base. He took away the Sabbath canopy that had been built at the temple and removed the royal entryway outside the temple of the Lord, indifferent to the king of Assyria. As for the other events of the reign of Ahaz and what he did, are they not written in the book of the annals of the kings of Judah? Ahaz rested with his ancestors and was buried with them in the city of David, and Hezekiah his son succeeded him as king. Second Kings seventeen one to forty, Hoshea last king of Israel, in the twelfth year of Ahaz king of Judah, Hoshea son of Ela became king of Israel in Samaria, and he reigned nine years. He did evil in the eyes of the Lord, but not like the kings of Israel who preceded him. Shalmaneser, king of Assyria, came up to attack Hoshea, who had been Shalmaneser's vassal and had paid him tribute. But the king of Assyria discovered that Hoshea was a traitor, for he had sent envoys to So, king of Egypt, and he no longer paid tribute to the king of Assyria, as he had done year by year. Therefore Shalmaneser seized him and put him in prison. The king of Assyria invaded the entire land, marched against Samaria, and laid siege to it for three years. In the ninth year of Hoshea, the king of Assyria captured Samaria and deported the Israelites to Assyria. He settled them in Hala, in Gozan, on the Habor River and in the towns of the Medes. Israel exiled because of sin. All this took place because the Israelites had sinned against the Lord their God, who had brought them up out of Egypt from under the power of Pharaoh, king of Egypt. They worshipped other gods and followed the practices of the nations the Lord had driven out before them, as well as the practices that the kings of Israel had introduced. The Israelites secretly did things against the Lord their God that were not right. From watchtower to fortified city, they built themselves high places in all their towns. They set up sacred stones and Asherah poles on every high hill and under every spreading tree. At every high place, they burned incense as the nation whom the Lord had driven out before them had done. They did wicked things that aroused the Lord's anger. They worshipped idols, though the Lord had said, You shall not do this. The Lord warned Israel and Judah through all his prophets and seers. Turn from your evil ways, observe my commands and decrees, in accordance with the entire law that I commanded your ancestors to obey, and that I delivered to you through my servants, the prophets. But they would not listen, and were as stiff-necked as their ancestors, who did not trust in the Lord their God. They rejected his decrees and the covenant he had made with their ancestors, and the statutes he had warned them to keep. They followed worthless idols, and themselves became worthless. They imitated the nations around them, although the Lord had ordered them to not do as they do. They forsook all the commands of the Lord their God, and made for themselves two idols cast in the shape of calves and an Asherah pole. They bowed down to all the starry hosts, and they worshipped Baal, 
They sacrificed their sons and daughters in the fire. They practiced divination and sought omens and sold themselves to do evil in the eyes of the Lord, arousing his anger. So the Lord was very angry with Israel and removed them from his presence. Only the tribe of Judah was left, and even Judah did not keep the command of the Lord their God. They followed the practices Israel had introduced. Therefore the Lord rejected all the people of Israel. He afflicted them and gave them into the hands of plunderers until he thrust them from his presence. When he tore Israel away from the house of David, they made Jeroboam son of Nebat their king. Jeroboam enticed Israel away from following the Lord and caused them to commit a great sin. The Israelites persisted in all the sins of Jeroboam and did not turn away from them until the Lord removed them from his presence as he had warned through all his servants the prophets. So the people of Israel were taken from their homeland into exile in Assyria and they are still there. Samaria resettled. The king of Assyria brought people from Babylon, Kutha, Ava, Hamath, and Sephavaim, and settled them in the towns of Samaria to replace the Israelites. They took over Samaria and lived in its towns. When they first lived there, they did not worship the Lord. So he sent lions among them and they killed some of the people. It was reported to the king of Assyria, the people you deported and resettled in the towns of Samaria do not know what the God of that country requires. He has sent lions among them which are killing them off because the people do not know what he requires. Then the king of Assyria gave his order, have one of the priests you took captive from Samaria go back to live there and teach the people what the God of the land requires. So, one of the priests who had been exiled from Samaria came to live in Bethel and taught them how to worship the Lord. Nevertheless, each, nation, each national group made its own gods in the several towns where they settled and set them up in the shrines the people of Samaria had made at the high places. The people from Babylon made Sukkoth Benoth, those from Kutha made Nergal, and those from Hamath made Ashima. The Avites made Nibaz and Tarktak, and the Shephavites burned their children in the fire as sacrifices to Adramelech and Anamelech, the gods of Sephavaim. They worshipped the Lord, but they also appointed all sorts of their own people to officiate for them as priests in the shrines at the high places. They worshipped the Lord, but they also served their own gods in accordance with the customs of the nations from which they had been brought. To this day, they persist in their former practices. They neither worship the Lord nor adhere to the decrees and regulations, the Lord's, the laws and commands that the Lord gave the descendants of Jacob, whom he named Israel. When the Lord made a covenant with the Israelites, he commanded them, Do not worship any other gods or bow down to them, serve them or sacrifice to them. But the Lord who brought you up out of Egypt might, with mighty power and outstretched arm, is the one you must worship. To him you shall bow down and to him offer sacrifices. You must always be careful to declare to keep the decrees and regulations, the laws and commands he wrote for you. Do not worship other gods. Do not forget the covenant I made with you. And do not worship other gods. Rather, worship the Lord your God. It is he who will deliver you from the hand of all your enemies. They would not listen, however, but persisted in their former practices. Even while these people were worshipping the Lord, they were serving their idols. To this day, their children and grandchildren continue to do as their ancestors did. New Testament NIV Version, Acts 26, 24-32 At this point, Festus interrupted Paul's defense. You are out of your mind, Paul, he shouted. Your great learning is driving you insane. I am not insane, most excellent Festus, Paul replied. What I am saying is true and reasonable. The king is familiar with all these things, and I can speak freely to him. I am convinced that none of this has escaped his notice because it was not done in a corner. 
King Agrippa, do you believe the prophet? I know you do. Then Agrippa said to Paul, Do you think that in so such a short time you can persuade me to be a Christian? Paul replied, Short time or long, I pray to God that not only you, but all who are listening to me today may become what I am, except for these chains. The king rose, and with him the governor and Bernice and those sitting with them. After they left the room, they began saying to one another, This man is not doing anything that deserves death or imprisonment. Agrippa said to Festus, This man could have been set free if he had not appealed to Caesar. Acts 27, 1-12 Paul sails for Rome. When it was decided that we would sail for Italy, Paul and some other prisoners were handed over to a centurion named Julius, who belonged to the imperial regiment. We boarded a ship from Adramitium, about to sail for ports along the coast of the province of Asia, and we put out to sea. Aristarchus, a Macedonian from Thessalonica, was with us. The next day, we landed at Sidon, and Julius, in kindness to Paul, allowed him to go to his friends so they might provide for his needs. From there, we put out to sea again and passed to the Lee of Cyprus, because the winds were against us. When we had sailed across the open sea of the coast of Cilicia and Pamphylia, we landed at Myra in Lycia. There the centurion found an Alexandrian ship sailing for Italy and put us on board. We made slow headway for many days and had difficulty arriving off Snidus. When the wind did not allow us to hold our course, we sailed to the Lee of Crete, opposite Salmon. We moved along the coast with difficulty and came to a place called Fair Havens near the town of Lassia. Much time had been lost and sailing had already become dangerous because by now it was after the Day of Atonement. So Paul warned them, Men, I can see that our voyage is going to be dis disastrous and bring great loss to ship and cargo and to our own lives also. But the centurion, instead of listening to what Paul said, followed the advice of the pilot and of the owner of the ship. Since the harbor was unsuitable to winter in, the majority decided that we should sail on, hoping to reach Phoenix and winter there. This was a harbor in Crete, facing both southwest and northwest. Psalms and Proverbs Psalm 81 verse 8 to 16 Hear me, my people, and I will warn you. If you would only listen to me, Israel, you shall have no foreign god among you. You shall not worship any god other than me. I am the Lord your God who brought you up out of Egypt. Open wide your mouth and I will fill it. But my people would not listen to me. Israel would not submit to me. So I gave them over to their stubborn hearts to follow their own devices. If my people would only listen to me, if Israel would only follow my ways, how quickly I would subdue their enemies and turn my hand against their foes. Those who hate the Lord would cringe before him, and their punishment would last forever. But you would be fed with the finest of wheat, with honey from the rock. I would satisfy you. Amen. Lessons learned from the Old Testament verses. Second Kings 16. Consequences of idolatry and unfaithfulness. King Ahaz of Judah's decision to ally with Assyria and his adoption of Assyrian gods highlight the dangers of political and religious compromises that conflict with God's commands. This teaches that seeking security in anything or anyone other than God leads to spiritual and often physical bondage. Second Kings 17 The Fall of Israel, Northern Kingdom this chapter details the reasons behind Israel's exile, primarily their persistent idolatry and disobedience to God's laws. It serves as a stark reminder that persistent sin and rejection of God's ways can lead to devastating consequences, emphasizing the importance of obedience and faithfulness to God.
Lessons learned from the New Testament verses. Acts 26, 24 to 32. Paul's defense and integrity. Paul's articulate and respectful defense before Festus and Agrippa demonstrates how to witness to authority with integrity and boldness. Paul uses his trial as a platform to share his testimony and the gospel, showing that every situation, however adverse, can be an opportunity to testify about Christ. Acts 27 verse 1 to 12 Navigating difficult circumstances with God's guidance As Paul heads towards Rome, his journey by sea starts with warnings of danger. Paul's insight and warnings about the voyage teach the importance of spiritual discernment and speaking up when God provides wisdom, even when others may not initially heed the warnings. Lessons learned from Psalm 81 verse 8 to 16. Call to obedience and promise of blessing. This segment of Psalm 81 features God's call to his people to listen and walk in his ways, promising great blessings if they obey. It teaches the value of listening to God's voice and the benefits of obedience as God desires to feed and satisfy his people abundantly. These passages collectively underscore the severe consequences of idolatry and unfaithfulness, the importance of faithfulness to God, how to utilize opportunities for testimony, the need for spiritual discernment, and the blessings that follow obedience to God's commands. Faith declarations from 2 Kings 16 and 2 Kings 17. I declare that I will place my trust and security in God alone, avoiding the pitfalls of idolatry and the allure of false alliances that compromise my faith. I confess my commitment to obeying God's commands and living faithfully according to his ways. I acknowledge that my actions have consequences and I choose to follow God wholeheartedly to avoid the downfalls of disobedience and unfaithfulness. Faith declaration from Acts 26, 24 to 32 and Acts 27, 1 to 12. I affirm that I will use every opportunity, even challenging circumstances, to testify about Jesus Christ. I will maintain my integrity and speak with wisdom and respect in all situations, especially when facing those in authority. I believe that God grants me discernment and I will heed and share his guidance, trusting in his protection and direction even in perilous or uncertain times. Faith declarations from Psalm 81 verse 8 to 16. I commit to listening to God's voice and obeying his instructions. I confess that God is my sole provider and sustainer and as I walk in his ways, he will fill me with the finest blessings. I trust in the Lord's promises to nourish and satisfy me as I remain faithful to him. I will not harden my heart, but I will respond to his call with readiness and joy. In Jesus' name, we pray. Amen. Please, if you were blessed by the scriptures and you will like to make Jesus your personal Lord and Savior, kindly repeat this prayer after me, believing in your heart every single word you say. Lord Jesus, I confess my sins and I ask for your forgiveness. Please come into my heart as my Lord and Savior. Take complete control of my life and help me to walk in your footsteps daily by the power of the Holy Spirit. Thank you, Lord, for saving me and for answering my prayer in Jesus' name. Amen. Congratulations if you said this prayer. We are excited to welcome you into God's family. Kindly go ahead right now. Send us an email. Let us know you gave your heart to Christ. Someone is going to reach out to you and pray with you and help you in your new walk of faith. The email address is salvationinchrist101 at gmail.com. That is salvationinchrist101 at gmail.com. God bless you. Please kindly go ahead right now. Subscribe to my YouTube channel. Follow me on Facebook, on Instagram, and on TikTok at Sandra Boyo Aruleba. Thank you so much for being here again today. It's always a blessing having you here. I look forward to another amazing day with you tomorrow. Have a blessed day today. 
I love you. Bye.